Hey guys, so I'm Ryan Morrissey with Peak Custom Fitness Solutions, and I'm here today with Ruthie O'Hare, who is our integrative holistic nutrition coach on staff. And today we're going to wrap about keto. Ruthie, thanks for tagging along today. Um, appreciate you jumping on so we can dive into this controversial topic. Um, so obviously over the past two, maybe three years, keto has been a huge um, fad within our health and fitness industry because that's what we like to do in our industry when we grab a hold of things. Um, so we know that just to give our listeners a little background, it's been around for a hundred years, right? It's been a phenomenal strategy to help people that are managing disease. And it has now taken on a completely different path because there's obviously money behind it and supplement companies and everybody else that's getting on board. Um, and I just want to provide some clarity to our, our listeners and our clients today because we have, you know, coaching clients, uh, personal training clients that have used it. You know, we've messed with that strategy ourselves a ton over the past few years. Uh, some people have had success, some people haven't. So I just want to kind of dive in and talk about, uh, you know, the pros and cons and then what we think about when we uh, figure out if that's an applicable tool, right? So with nutrition, just like we talked about in our last podcast uh, with regards to exercise as well, we always need to start with a goal. Uh, before we jump ahead, you know, on our continuum and start thinking about the tool. And I feel like since marketing has been out of control with keto and every other nutrition strategy, that people make it a religion, you know, instead of just a tool about their health. Um, so I want to provide some clarity on that, you know, so can you give me just what's going on through your head as you're working with either ongoing clients or a potential new client to just think about, is this an applicable tool for them? Is it something that maybe you want to strive for in the future? Um, or is it completely off? You know, what are you thinking about when you go through that process? Sure. Um, so I'll start by saying that keto, by definition, from a nutrition perspective, is 70% uh, of your caloric intake is coming from fats, right? And then about 10, 15 coming from protein, all right? And then the rest coming from carbohydrates. So when we talk about keto as a diet strategy, it is very extreme, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's one of the most important things that I consider when I'm sitting down with some, someone new. Uh, keto, I don't think should be taken lightly. It is an extreme diet. So there needs to be a compelling reason for putting the client on that diet strategy, right? And totally that reason can be many things. It can be athletic performance. And I think we're going to dig into, you know, a little bit more about this, but it can be athletic performance that maybe this keto diet would give them access to a new level of performance, mm -hmm. right? It could be that there are some significant, you know, health concerns that they are hoping to remedy with the diet. Um, but basically you're understanding that it's an extreme and we need a really good reason to put someone in that extreme situation and we're weighing the risks and the benefits. Mm -hmm. So when I sit down with someone, um, you know, we start with a health history and that health history not only tells me a little bit about them and their health and where they're coming from, but it also includes their goals. And you mentioned that goals are very important. So if someone's going to do the keto diet, <clears throat> it needs to align with their goals and there needs to be a compelling reason for them to be in such an extreme strategy, even if it's for a short, short time. Right. Yep. Completely. So, the cons that you mentioned or potential risks, mm -hmm. right? Are there a ton of them? Are they significant? Um, or, or are they more maybe mental obstacles mm -hmm. with just the, the fact that it's so extreme and such a change from where, where most people, you know, I hate to use the word normal, but normally eat. Yeah. Um, is the risk really in more of the lifestyle change and the fact that they can easily yo-yo and, and miss the mark because it is so tough? Um, I think it's a couple different things. I mean, when it comes to risks, there are some pretty significant things that you could do if you're following a keto diet that would be very detrimental for your health. Um, an example that comes to mind clearly for me is if you aren't already familiar and comfortable with eating, you know, whole foods, plant-based foods, the keto diet is going to propel you in a direction where you might 
end up with high cholesterol. You know, mm-hmm. you're going to be eating a lot of uh, animal-based fats to try to get those fats in. So that's the easiest example where I can think of risks, you know, that might take you in a bad direction, right? So yeah. when you look at a client, <clears throat> understanding where they're starting from, what their level of comfort is already with healthy food and nutrition and balance and where they're getting their food sources that's something that I look at. So if they tend to go more towards convenience foods or fast foods, and they have some improvements that they need to make um, with just the quality and the cleanliness of the foods that they're consuming, that might be, you know, a better starting place for someone like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Completely. Um, Other risks, you know, there's a lot of research out there. It can increase inflammation if it's not done correctly. Um, You don't want to be starting in a place of, inflammation you know Mm -hmm. i know we can talk a little more technical if you want to about that piece but Mm -hmm. um those are some of the biggest risks um no there's also fasting we can get into that and you know a fasting protocol can have certain risks for certain groups of people um so yeah those are some of the ones that come to mind so i guess the bottom line is when you're looking at a client and assessing if it's a good tool for them or not you're taking into account a lot of different aspects about who they are what their goals are you know, how comfortable they already are with like, you know, the, the habits of healthy Mm -hmm. eating. Um, Another one that I look at is, you know, where are they starting from? It's very interesting. Some people have already gravitated towards a more high fat diet without even knowing that they're doing it. Right. Mm -hmm. Just their preference. And so in some cases I could have a beginner client who doesn't really know a lot about nutrition or, you know, aligning their nutrition to match their goals, but they're already kind of in a high fat place. Mm -hmm. So why take them to a different extreme? If that makes sense. Yeah, totally. The less you have to change, right? The easier you're going to have a a time getting somebody on the path that that is the recommended strategy, right? Yeah. So you mentioned inflammation and I don't want to dive into the physiology a ton today. We can follow up later with that kind of stuff. But one of the big pros of keto as well is the anti-inflammatory response to it. So I just want to highlight something you said that's great, and we need just a little more clarity on that for everybody listening. Mm -hmm. So whether it's keto, whether it's another, you know, religion that somebody picks for their nutrition strategy that they're stuck on, um, that has a lot of pros, the benefit from a lot of these things can all be the anti-inflammatory effect, right? And reducing toxins in the body. But that's not really done from is it plant-based? Is it animal fat and protein based? Um, is it macronutrient based? What's the biggest thing? I'm kind of queuing you up on this that we need to start with, regardless of what direction you go. People just need to hear this part because it's critical before they go in any direction, right? So it's whole foods. Like Food. We need to hit that, right? Yep. Yeah. So you mentioned, just to give an example, you know, you mentioned what people can unintentionally do if they start on keto and they haven't done any of that whole foods transition from the normal Western diet and uh, everything they eat is out of a bag or a box and everything's processed and everything has high fructose corn syrup in and everything else. Right. So we're inflamed due to those things. Yep. So anything, go ahead. I'm sorry. And many other things. I mean, Mm -hmm. inflammation and toxicity and all those kind of buzzwords that we also hear. Mm -hmm. I mean, Food is a big one, but it's many other things in our, our lifestyle too. And maybe I'm going down a rabbit hole, I'll pull it back a little bit. But yep. you know. No, you're right. Totally. <laughs> yeah. But food can be the medicine to help counter some of those things along with changing those behaviors too, right? Yep. You got it. So if you're headed down that path of getting rid of those things mm-hmm. and cleaning up your nutrition strategy and getting better sources of food, then the next tier is what am I doing with macronutrients, right? What am I doing with the origin of my food? But mm-hmm. are you saying that the first step should always be let's get whole foods first, right? Absolutely. Yeah. With okay. any diet strategy that I would recommend to anyone, the first part is always more whole foods, less mm-hmm. processed foods. You know, at peak, I know we call it, uh, you know, like red flags or low hanging mm-hmm. fruit, but you know, I think what we see a lot with clients of all different levels is, you know, we get distracted by a cool, shiny thing like Mm -hmm. the keto diet or paleo or, you know, like whatever label it has. The bottom line of nutrition is you have to have this foundation of good choices, right? Foundation of whole foods, 
you know, making food at home, like that's really where anybody starts. Mm -hmm. And then from that point, we have, you know, a whole toolbox full of different nutritional tools or strategies that we can use to, you know, propel you further. Right. I love that. You nailed it. It's a great analogy. We use it at peak all the time. You know, the vision of a pyramid, right? Or that infographic. And with training, you need to build the base of that pyramid and then allows you to peak higher and higher with higher levels of training. Nutrition follows the same thing, right? You check all those boxes and get the base of that really wide. And now you've gotten rid of a bunch of bad stuff. You've replaced it with a bunch of good stuff. We know where food's coming from. We have healthy behavior behind our choices and all that kind of stuff. Then you can play with all these fun, shiny new toys. But until you do that, you know, for example, I know people that have gone down the keto path without any guidance and just browsing the internet, they wind up having a, a diet of mozzarella cheese and sausage. And they're macro, right? I mean, we're laughing because it can happen. That's yeah. what the internet does. Um, but unfortunately, like you said, it's ramping up blood markers that we don't want to be high, right? We're getting the complete reverse effect of what we should get from keto. Right. So the way in which you apply it is critical. And there's su- it's such a big like umbrella term, you know, and at the end of the day, it's really just a macronutrient breakdown. Yes. And then there are 50 different ways to do it. Yep. And that's up to the individual and the coach and whoever to figure out what's applicable to them, right? Absolutely. Cool. Good deal. Well, thanks for that clarification. That makes a ton of sense. Yeah. So you want to dive a little deeper into uh, like the application of it. And maybe let's discuss scenarios where we have clients that have different goals, right? Maybe some are weight loss, some are performance based, which you mentioned a little bit before. Um, you want to talk about a couple of those things that, that we can get and how, how that works without getting too deep into science? Yeah, I would say let's talk about, you know, who it might be good for. Like, say mm-hmm. you have these found- foundational pieces set. Um, if I were to have a client who had, you know, some kind of endurance event or mm-hmm. endurance training um, as part of their goals, keto might be a very appropriate diet strategy for them. Mm-hmm. Same yep. thing with, um, say, I have somebody who, this is like the complete opposite end of the spectrum. Say I have somebody who is significantly overweight, mm-hmm. very limited in what they can do safely in terms of exercise, mm-hmm. right? not able to tap into high intensity stuff. They're going to be staying in safe, lower intensity, you know, cardiovascular training to help mm-hmm. with their, or even resistance training, right? To help mm-hmm. with their weight loss goals. Those are two complete opposites and keto is appropriate for both of them. Yep. Right. Nailed it. Yeah, totally. So I guess, tell me the question again. <laughs> yeah, no problem. No, just wanted to talk about the, how it can be uh, beneficial to those different, you know, yeah. parts of our population and, uh, and, you know, clientele that we work with, how it can really span a broad clientele, but yeah. we just need to make sure that, that we've already checked the boxes to get them ready to use that tool. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, Perfect. In both of those groups of people, um, you know, the whole point of the ketogenic diet Mm -hmm. is preparing the body to use fat for fuel, whether it's fat stores or fat that you're consuming from your food. Mm -hmm. So in the situation of the athlete, you know, in an endurance event, the ketogenic diet can give you the opportunity to, you know, either consume fat or tap into fat stores for those Mm -hmm. long duration, lower intensity cardiovascular events Um, and then for the person who might be looking to lose weight with the keto diet and some other tools that go along with it like fasting um, you will be using the fat stores that are on the body you know instead of calories that you're consuming and so it would help that person eventually lose weight yeah so those are some examples in terms of of setting them up I guess that's why I started there you again you have to understand what this person is after you know, mm-hmm. and that kind of dictates how you set them up with their program, right? Mm-hmm. Like, are they in a caloric deficit? Are they in a caloric surplus? It's keto, but there's still all these other variables from a nutrition standpoint that you're going to want to manipulate, yep. right? Totally. So that's the goal that they want. Um, so, in terms of setting them up, you've got your foundation of you know healthy nutrition habits. And then it's almost like any other strategy. If I'm being honest, as a coach, right? I give a caloric target that Mm -hmm. is based on the goals. I give macronutrient targets and whether they're doing this in a food journal, like chronometer or something like that, or if they're just using, you know, the palm, the thumb, Mm -hmm. like however you go about measuring what you're eating, 
it's kind of the same thing. It's just different targets. Yeah. Yeah. Held it. Totally. Yeah. No, it's great. So let's use me as an example. Okay. So I've recently got back on keto about two weeks ago, right? It's probably the, I don't know, fifth, sixth time I've used the strategy over the last two or three years. And I just want to provide our listeners a little more information about like the application of it. Okay. Right. So let's go through some of that stuff. And then we're going to have much more content available right on our social media platforms that's coming out. So people that do think this is an appropriate strategy or they're intrigued to just learn more can see how potentially easy it can be once those earlier boxes are already checked. Mm -hmm. Right. So about two weeks ago, right, did this big endurance event, was training up for that. Keto was an appropriate strategy at that time. You mentioned fat as fuel. That's one of the big benefits of it. That's why we're doing it. That's why we're opening up that fuel tank with fat and minimizing this other one, carbohydrate. Uh, great for endurance events, not good for high intensity events. Okay. So any listeners out there that are doing, you know, really high heart rate work, um, do 5k training, anything like that, not great for that. You're going to lose the top gear, but used as a tool in the off season when you're not hitting those higher heart rate zones and that kind of, you know, track repeat protocol, uh, protocol, stuff like that. And you're building an aerobic base or just focusing on strength training, then huge improvement. So sorry, huge improvement there for the fat utilization, which coincides with your training plan, right? So finish the event, just carb loading gels, all the crap that we don't like to eat, but kind of needed to at that time. And I was just inundated with carbs and I felt like garbage and kind of done with it. So I needed a hard reset to get rid of that. So day after the event, you know, right into it, full bore, two feet in, uh, back to the macronutrient strategy of keto, um, you know, reducing carbohydrates down as close to 50 grams as possible throughout the day. Now, granted people, you know, we can go back and forth about this later on, but people that eat a higher caloric intake or have a higher uh, amount of calories that they're expending throughout the day or exercise, it's going to be a little harder to keep that gram count down, right? Because we're just eating more. Yeah. So if you're eating 1600 calories total, it's pretty easy to keep your carbs under 50 grams. If you're eating 3,800, right? And your goal is to improve lean mass or you're burning a thousand plus calories a day in a workout and your goal is not to lose a bunch of weight doing that, you know, maintaining, then that's very difficult. That 10% carbohydrate now gets down to like seven, mm -hmm. 6%, something like that. Yeah. Um, so anyway, it's been about 10 days back in. Um, my big goal with it was the performance piece and just the reset piece for future training. So what I'm looking to do is get my body out of the metabolic pathway of relying on carbohydrate and try to reset that and, and get a little more fat utilization. And right now I'm doing low intensity training, kind of building back up. I have another event in two months. So I'm trying to get that macronutrient strategy nailed down. Um, I am not restricting calories. I am intentionally adding a lot of fat and pulling the carbohydrates back, but giving my body enough fuel, right? Because we've both have, have messed with this and kind of failed ourselves. Um, thank God prior to working with clients with this a few years ago, where if you restrict calories and restrict carbohydrate at the same time, that's recipe for disaster. I mean, all the symptoms that people talk about with keto flu, right? Headaches and brain fog and irritability and, you know, a bunch of bad stuff can happen with that. So we want to make sure that transition and again, learn from my mistakes. Um, caloric intake's about the same. I'm not changing a thing, right? I just want to get over here and use that fuel tank again. And, you know, we know all the benefits of keto, lowering our insulin use, um, anybody that has metabolic syndrome or going down the path of type 2 diabetes and all that, it can reverse all that stuff, right? I'm not concerned about being down there because I was only in the high carbohydrate state, you know, for a month. Um, but why not benefit from that stuff and get all your inflammatory markers down and just kind of reset the whole body? So I'm using it as a temporary tool, and then I'm going to flip and reintegrate carbohydrate use at a higher level, but we're not going to go crazy. I'm going to get into a maintenance phase around 100 to 150 grams a day and continue to use that. So then I can tap into that high intensity fuel tank where there's muscle glycogen stored for my high heart rate training. Yeah. How does that all sound like I'm moving in the right direction with that as an applicable tool, as long as I'm not doing it with my mozzarella cheese and sausage? Yeah, I think you just dropped like a, a wealth of information, you know, with everything that you just said, because you're, you're actually using a couple 
different things, right? You're matching your nutrition strategy with a certain training phase. Mm -hmm. You know, you described how you finished an event. You saw an opportunity, a window to like clean up some nutrition stuff that might impact your performance if you were to continue in the long term. So you're taking Mm -hmm. a window of time and you're retraining your body to be fat adapted. It probably is already trained because that's another thing we didn't talk about, but You know, if you use the ketogenic diet as a regular tool, your body becomes more and more able to use fat for fuel when it needs to. It's almost like you're teaching it. Yeah, it remembers. What to do in certain instances, which is really powerful about keto. Yeah, Um, metabolic flexibility, right? That's the term we're looking for for everybody. Right, that's one thing I heard that you're doing, which is excellent. I totally am on board with that. The other piece that, you know, I would say from the nutrition standpoint is, you don't have to be so strict, especially someone like you. I understand when you have that, you know, big caloric amount that you need to get in each day just to maintain where you're at, given your output and your size and your muscle mass, um, you know, appropriately tarm- timed carbohydrates, mm-hmm. you would still benefit a lot from, you know, like lower fat and those carbohydrates around your workout. Let me back up and say that a different way. So, in your instance, right? Say it's really hard to keep at that lower percentage of carbohydrates. If you yeah. if you did have some foods, and I'm talking vegetables, I'm not talking like bread or anything like yeah. that. But say your veggies, your fibrous veggies, were kind of pushing you over the mm-hmm. technical keto range, yeah. right? If those things are happening around a workout, right? Yeah. Your body's going to go through that glycogen. So if someone like you would be able to get away with a little bit more carbs. Mm-hmm as long as they're appropriately timed and you would still be getting the benefits of, you know, a higher fat diet, fat adaptation, all the Mm -hmm. performance benefits that you're going to get from it. So if you were my client, I'd be like, you're good. Don't worry so much. You have a little flexibility because you are who you are and you do what you do, right? You tapped into a great point there. So that metabolic flexibility, right? The ability to use fat when maybe you don't have anything before a morning workout and you're doing low intensity cardio and the ability to go hard and you've got some stored muscle glycogen from, you know, extra Brussels sprouts you ate last night or something else. You know, how many times do we have the conversation with clients where, you know, somebody that gets kind of obsessed with the numbers, um, you know, to understanding, I'm going to tap into like clinical ketosis too here in a second, but people that get so focused on the 50 grams, like, man, I, I'm eating veggies. I'm, you know, I'm chicken breast. I got fat on everything and I'm healthy sources. Whole foods are great. And I can't get under 60 grams. Like, well, let's look at the foods you're eating that took you over. Oh, you had a little too much spaghetti squash. You had a a couple too many spears of asparagus. Like if that's your error in the day, right? That's not an error. That's a phenomenal problem to have. And you're good. You are totally fine. Now clinical ketosis, right? Not to dive down this rabbit hole, but I'll keep it real brief. Clinical Mm -hmm. ketosis is, you know, watching our blood ketone levels come up because of the fat source utilization as fuel, right? So that's when we know clinically, or is somebody in ketosis or not? Now in ketosis isn't like a lifestyle, like you're not in ketosis all the time, even if you're on keto, some people are in it, some people are not, you know, some people never hit it clinically, but they get the subjective feedback right? So they can go a long time without eating. They don't have cravings. They can do a prolonged workout without food prior and they feel fine. They don't have any lightheadedness. Their inflammatory markers have gone down their their good cholesterol has gone up. Like a bunch of stuff has happened subjectively, you know, some objectively, but they're, they're, whether it's urine or blood ketones, I haven't gone up high enough to be clinical. Who cares? At the end of the day, people stress about that so much. It doesn't matter, right? Like as long as you're healthy and everything else is moving in the right direction, stop it just means there's a buildup or an excess in your blood or in your urine that you're excreting so if you're using your ketones as fuel again this is a podcast for another day but you can be building them up but you're using them at the same rate so therefore you don't have an excess so you can't tell you're in clinical ketosis but you're there and that's one of the things especially i would say people newer to the keto diet they get Mm. very fixated on you know, the, the urine strips or the blood strips or the measurements of ketones. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's always a challenging 
conversation when we need to share this and say, mm-hmm. you know, don't worry about that stuff. Like yeah. eat the right things, stick to your target, stick to your plan. Yeah. And you're going to be good to go. Right. Totally. Let's yeah. hit the last thing. So let's okay. talk about, all right, you're done keto. You've done that to kind of reestablish the things we've been talking about with health. Now we were talking earlier before we got on this call about what's next, right? It's not a, a lifestyle forever. It's not an end all solution. It's a great reset tool. It's a, it's a great tool to use at any time for most people, but like what's that next stage look like? Mm-hmm. And does it look that different? Yeah. Um, no, it's not that different. You know, I think the only thing that creates maybe shock or awe mm-hmm with people is that it's just that the standard American diet has gotten so extreme in a different direction. You know, Mm -hmm. I would say as a society, we generally consume too many carbohydrates for Mm -hmm. our average activity level, right? Mm -hmm. You have to think about where we've come from. You know, we used to be hunters and gatherers or Mm -hmm. farmers or, you know, people that were up and about and working all day. And if that were your life, then, you would probably need more carbohydrates in your diet, right? Yeah, to totally. Your energy levels. Mm-hmm. Um, that is just not the common person in our society, right? So mm-hmm. when you think about where to go after keto, it might still look high fat to some people, mm-hmm. only when they compare it to what we consider to be the standard American diet, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. when you end up after keto is, I mean, if you want specific numbers, I usually go like between 55 or 65% of mm-hmm. your calories from fats. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of set the protein based on the muscle mass and the goals of the mm-hmm. individual. And I do the same thing with carbohydrates. You set your carbohydrates based on, again, your activity level, your goals, kind of what you're trying to accomplish. This is when nutrition just becomes very intentional. And that's yeah, totally. Fun, right? All right. So let's say, yeah, I totally agree. And you and I love the stuff we can wrap about the numbers and stuff all day. So let's take it down like seven notches for somebody that, you know, did, no, I love the fashion, but if somebody did keto for six, eight weeks, they had a lot of success, they, you know, met their goals and kind of they're done. I want to, I want to eat, uh, not that, the normal Western American diet, but I want to have a sweet potato. I want to have some rice. So just to throw that out there, if they have a normal keto strategy, right. But then for dinner, they swap out um, the extra olive oil or avocado Mm -hmm. for a sweet potato, right. Or some butternut squash or something that's a little more uh, carbohydrate containing. That could be a lifestyle to just continue forever and they're fine. And they're not in clinical ketosis, but they still maintain that metabolic flexibility. Right. Yep. And I usually recommend to people um, even more, like slightly more specific, when you go from keto to something more normal and sustainable, Mm -hmm. again, you want to time your carbohydrates around your activity. So it Mm -hmm. it might be dinner, it might not be, Mm -hmm. right? For most people, it's going to be their first and second meal as opposed to their second and third. Um, But you do add back in complex carbohydrates in an appropriate amount and you just put them in the meals where your body's going to use them yeah so they're not just sitting there you know that kind of thing yeah totally cool if you do it that way yeah just one more thing to finish up if you do it that way um you can actually still get into potentially ketosis overnight Mm -hmm. right yeah you could still be adding carbohydrates back in um, but as you fast while you sleep and maybe into the morning, you're dipping down really low with your, you know, your glycogen levels and yeah. experiencing a, a small amount of ketosis at that time. Yeah. And the body is just fat adapted now. So we can go fat fuel tank when needed carbs when needed, right. When called upon. That's yeah. awesome. Great clarity. Great conversation. I appreciate your time today. Hopefully, you know, our clients and listeners will just have a little more, um, clarity about again what keto is all about who it can help really anybody but you have to make sure that you meet the prerequisites that's what it's all about it's only extreme if you go from this end to this end right if you've been trending in that direction and cleaning up your nutrition with whole foods and cutting down on sugars and all that kind of stuff my change two weeks ago was nothing other than you know take out a piece of fruit take out some rice sub in a fat 
and that's about it. I'm there, right? It wasn't a big deal. So uh, we're going to have a lot of content. Uh, I'm going to post on the, the Peaks uh, social media platforms. So we'll have some recipes on there. We'll have um, just some kind of lifestyle hacks uh, and some ways to make this easier with the transition to keto. If anybody's interested or just wants to follow along, uh, and then we're here to help. This may or may not be the tool for you but there are plenty of other tools that have a ton of health benefits as well. And don't feel like just because you either can't do this or you tried it and you, you know, perceive that you failed, doesn't mean that it's the only way to get healthy. There are so many different options and that's what Ruthie and I are here for. All right. Thanks for your time today, Ruthie. I appreciate it. Of course. Thank you, Ryan. I'll talk cool. to you soon. All right. Sounds good. Take care.